Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There has been some mixed news from Kuberg this week, as the nuclear power station prepares to secure a 20-year life extension. Terence Kuma joins me to discuss developments. Hi Terence. Hi Shalom. Kuberg reported a milestone in its replacement of the old Unit 1 steam generators. Yes, so these steam generators are being replaced. There's three in each unit, um, and Kuberg has two units. And the first one of these old steam generators has now been taken out of the containment building and transported across to the storage facility. So it's a major milestone in this because these steam generator repairs are a significant part of this current big outage. Um, and these are long duration outages. And it's going to be for sort of a six month to try and get all the different components that are needed to be replaced and upgraded and then refueled so that the, um, the, the plant can come back as soon as possible, as well as be extended in terms of its life. But the project has also hit some snags. Yes, I mean, this project has been hitting snag after snag. In fact, it's been underway since when it was approved back in 2010. And uh, th there was then these uh, big units, these big uh, steam generator units were being manufactured in France initially. That all came tumbling down at some point where it wasn't being made to, to standard. They then had to move it across to China to be uh, manufactured. One of the units uh, actually fell off its scaffolding, so there was a, an issue there. So, the, so it's been hitting a number of problems. And then on site itself, uh, the Kuberg team hasn't really managed the project very well up until now over this many, many, many years. And uh, there was a problem um, uh, unit 2 um, steam generators were supposed to be replaced before unit 1. That wasn't the original plan, but when it was revised, and when they tried to do that, uh, the, the container or the storage facilities that were needed, because these have got some contaminated parts, uh, those weren't in place. So it's hit, uh, it's hit a number of challenges over a number of years. But more recently, now with this new team in place, and having really gone through a, a, a major exercise to get ready for the Unit 1 uh, steam generator uh, uh, replacement program, they now announced that this week that they've, they've hit some, uh, what they call some unexpected challenges, and that the 180 type day, the six months, is not going to be met. They haven't give us, given us any insight into what it, uh, the new date would be, but it's definitely not going to be the early June type return to service that we were expecting. What does this mean for the life extension plan? As I said earlier, the steam generator replacement, so six in total, three in each unit, is crucial for the life extension of Kuberg. Eskim is pushing ahead with uh, application to extend the life of Kuberg by another 20 years. And uh, basically they have to do this replacement to, do it to make sure that they can put in to the national nuclear regulator that everything is now ready to allow this plant to operate for another 20 years. So every time there's a bit of a deadline uh, slippage, it puts pressure on both Eskim and the regulator to actually make, to be able to sign off because this is a, a nuclear plant, it's, it's highly regulated, it's got international regulation as well, it has to meet. And you know, mid 2024 is when the current license expires for one of the reactors and then 2025 20, for the other reactor so you know we're getting close and uh, a lot of boxes have to be ticked but a lot of investigation has to be done before they get that license extension so it's i think worrying times but i think uh, they're not saying this is a major slippage they're saying a few weeks but we need to see uh, what this means for uh, for that and also for the nuclear regulator to be able to sign off that this plant is now fit for s service for another 20 years. Do we know yet what the project will cost and whether this will be enough to secure a new license? I think no, we don't know either. I mean, when the project was first approved in 2010, it was set down as 20 billion. There's no way that this project is 20 billion. We don't have yet an updated or revised figure from Eskom, but it's going to be much higher than that 20 billion figure given all the problems that we've seen. 
And, you know, this has also been a controversial project um, because we're in the middle of load shedding. One is, you know, with all the problems that have happened, is this the best way of spending money to extend the life of Kuburg, or should we rather have gone for other alternatives and accelerated a, a major renewables program uh, backed up with flexible generators to replace this? I mean, that would be the direct cost, you know, is the direct cost comparison. I'm sure that will be done by someone. But the indirect cost of not having Kuburg operating for such long periods is, is major for South Africa during load shedding. For 2023, we're basically not going to have um, one of the units available for the whole of 2023, basically. So currently we don't have unit one. We'll, it will then return to service sometime. We don't know. Now it won't be June, but hopefully soon thereafter to help us through winter. And then uh, unit two, I think, will get taken down August, September. So I don't know, that schedule might be revised now with the, with the delay to unit one. But it's a long time not to have a thousand megawatts reliably producing into the grid when we uh, when load shedding. And as we know that load shedding this year has been very intense, often at stage four, sometimes stage five, sometimes even stage six. We've had a bit of reprieve over the last few couple of uh, weeks given the lower demand. And, um, but there's still, uh, go, still the, the outlook for the rest of the year as we go into winter is still for intense load shedding and not having Kuberg means not having served energy, unserved energy depends on what figure you use it's, you know between 10 rand and 80 rand so the economic costs um, to the economy of not having electricity from Kuberg is major so it is controversial then obviously there's concerns around the environmental aspects there's concerns already being raised about the way the NNR is running the public participation process, which closed this week. And um, it seems to me that uh, the case is being lined up for some sort of legal action against this NNR process, which, as I said, if it's not finalised in time, you know, 2024, mid-2024 is around the corner, really, in nuclear terms. So to have all those uh, ducks in a row and have the approvals in place to allow the unit one to continue from uh, mid 2024 for another 20 years. It is unclear at this stage. I think Eskom still believes there's, there's enough breathing space and they will get it all, all done in time. But yeah, we need to know what the actual costs is uh, of the direct costs, but we do know that the indirect costs are mounting as the long, every day that Kuburg is not available. That's every day of more intense load shedding. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.